Hi everyone, if you've watched any of my videos before, you probably noticed that in the video description I say if you want to help and support me, you can check out my project Novlisky. And I'm sure most of you guys are wondering, what the hell is Novlisky? I'm not clicking on this. So I'm making a video to explain what it is. It's something that I think a lot of you would generally find useful. It's something that I actually use uh, every day. And my dad and my, my wife both are using it uh, constantly as well and find it very useful. So what it is, is it's an AI hub. Um, I have hundreds of different of AI models. I know a lot of people are maybe just like AI is not for me, but I guarantee you it's something that if you're Googling stuff, then it's time to move over to AI because it's just a better way to access information. You're not dealing with all these sponsored posts on Google. It's a, and it's just a, a productivity enhancer. You can just do so much with it. So this is built on an open source project called LibreChat. It's something that I'll link below that you guys should check out. And it's something that you can work on yourself and contribute and build your own thing like this as well. Um, this LibreChat project is something that my buddy and I found when the project was just in its infancy. We recognized the potential of it. It's like, this is something that's super cool. Um, we want to be part of it. So we started contributing to it. And one of the first things that we uh, were looking at was to move things off of any type of subscription base. You know, with typically when you sign up with OpenAI or Anthropic, you're paying 20 bucks a month um, to use it. And I'm just not a fan of subscription pricing. It, you know, when, it, when my buddy and I, when we were living in China, it just that's, you never have subscription-based pricing stuff in China. I moved back to the US and I was just annoyed that everything is 20 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month. And I just didn't want to add any more of that stuff to it. So. What we have here is you just pay for the usage. And I, I guarantee you, if you're not, for most people, 98% of people, it's gonna be considerably cheaper paying for usage than paying 20 bucks a month. Like for me, I use AI pretty much every day and I probably spent about 40 bucks on my website in the past year. Um, so much better than the 240 would have been spending with uh, on OpenAI. But the, I'd say the, the biggest advantage though, is that I can just use multiple models and I use multiple models at the same time. So just for example, just to show you, um, what I always do is I'm always using uh, OpenAI and uh, Anthropic at the same time. Actually, let me just turn this off because I have a cool beta feature on. I'll show this, actually it's off. Okay, um, so now I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of multiple models, which is really useful because there's so many AI models, it's hard to know which one's the best. This way you can always have one, for example, you're familiar with the capabilities of GPT-4.0, the most common model, um, most popular model, but you wanna see how it stacks up with other models, this is the way to do it. So now I'm running both Anthropic Claude 3.5, which is a very good model. It's something that I think is probably better for coding than it is, uh, than OpenAI is. Um, so anyways, I, I have, for example, when I make uh, thumbnail images for the videos, I have a prompt that I create here. You can see on the right, this is just to expedite a lot of my work. It makes things so much quicker. Um, I do this. Uh, and so now I have two AI models running simultaneously. And so they both will generate outputs for me. Um, and so if what I do for, let's see, do I have to paste it? Okay, so yeah, I already have this pasted in. This is a summary of one of the episodes that I did or a clip that I edited that, for a video. And so when I want to make the thumbnail image, it can be kind of tricky just thinking of it on by yourself. So what I do is I just copy and paste it here. And then all of a sudden, Claude and GPT-4.0 are sp spitting out uh, mid-journey prompts for me. So I can use AI image generators. And so it has it, you know, on the right aspect ratio already. It knows what I am trying to maximize for in terms of uh, creating images that are compelling to get clicks on, on the videos. Um, a very useful tool. And it just saves me so much time. And you can, you know, I have prompts for uh, all, all the work that I do. I'm able to increase my productivity by I don't know, just double, triple. Uh, it, it's, it's really something that I think if you're not using, you should really reconsider. A lot of people are just like, I don't like AI because, you know, I, I'm used to my way. Well, AI is here and it's not going anywhere. And I think it's very, the, the quicker you learn to harness its power, just the further ahead you're going to be on a lot of things. Um, you know, for example, like when I, uh, I, 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 you can use a model like perplexity, uh, actually a quick way you can switch between models is to show as well. You can do at, so I'll switch to perplexity. We'll do like this one. This is a online model as you can see. So this is just useful for every day. If I just want to say, uh, tell me the, the weather forecast 
I can't even see what I'm writing down here because there's something over it. Weather forecast for next week in New York City. Okay, we'll just do that as an example. And, you know, so it'll just spit it out for you. So this is a real-time model, close to real-time. I think it's like two or three hours from real-time. Um, but it's just a great way to just gather information, just be like, what's give me a summary of the uh you know events going on in in romania with gorgescu or whatever and you can do it and then you can switch to another model you know if i want to go back to to open ai i can just add and then switch to you know whatever i want um and to to summarize that information so there's a lot of really cool tools you can do another cool thing there's so many features i won't be able to go through all of them um but uh you know you can see there's a lot of customization here you can uh, control your costs by setting the max amount of context and input just really quickly. If you want to learn more about how tokens are used and consumed, click on the learn more down here. I won't go through it all here, but it's pretty self-explanatory. But as you can see, I think since I started the video, you haven't even seen this number go down. It burns pretty, pretty low, uh, depending on what models you use. Um, and you can control the output. Um, you know, you have a lot of settings here. If you ever Think of things that you want to add, send a suggestion to me, click send feedback. I'd have, be happy to look at it and something that I can propose to the project to improve it. Um, uh, something cool as well that if you are familiar with Anthropic, you probably know things like uh, uh, artifacts. Well, we have artifacts, but what's cool about it is now it's compatible with other models, which is not something you can get on any other platform that I'm aware of anyways. Um, so for example, we'll just take a look. Uh, I toggled artifacts on. I'll see if it's... See this works. I'll say, write me a playable game of Snake. All right, where's the game? What's going on? GBT can be a little bit weird sometimes, but you just have to keep on talking. To it. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so you can see it's just instantly writing out the code right for me in the separate window, and then now I can I can play it. Oh wait, okay. Well, I just died. But anyway, so you can. You can, it's pretty neat. You can you can create anything like I created Space Invaders. You could I saw somebody that I know do, created a playable game of Doom just within their own window. Just be able to write that code right there. Um, it's uh, it's really neat. It's really impressive. Um, so I think it's something. No matter whether you're just a developer, a student, or just somebody like my wife that wants to use it to ask general questions, um, you know, it's a very useful tool and. One thing that's great that, that uh, my, my buddy and I, we spent a lot of time, we built, um, you know, uh, iOS native and Android native apps. So you can have seamless interaction. So uh, check it down if you like it, download it on the app store, please give it five stars. Um, and yeah, I think it's just something that you will find useful. I use it every day. My wife use it, uses it every day. My dad uses it quite a bit for an old man and he uses it to ask questions about often technical things like about some military equipment, stuff like that. He's always impressed. You know, he's a Chinese English translator. He admits he's like, thank goodness that he's winding down his career because AI w is replacing his ability to translate. Because I use it for actually Chinese translation a lot because I have to do that with some of my uh, e-commerce work that I do with China. Um, so anyways, please check it out, support it. This is a project that I'm I really love, I think it's really neat and, and I'm hoping that it'll give, if it takes off, it will give me some freedom to focus more on the podcast because to be honest, that's what I really enjoy doing. But I, I have a lot of other things that I need to do to make sure I, I keep on putting food on the table and I would like to be able to focus on the podcast so I don't have to worry about so much with my, you know, e-commerce job and uh, other things. This is, this is my passion. Um, I hope you'll find it useful and interesting uh and yeah just uh try it out tell me what you like about it what you don't like you know i'm i'm open to making suggestions that's what's what's so cool about this is that i'm in control you know of how the, how this is and so i i think that you you guys will enjoy it a lot anyways i'll stop there thanks a lot